In this video, we will be using the area or array model to divide three and four digit numbers by a one digit divisor. Next week, I will show you how to divide using a two digit divisor using the same strategy. So make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay in the loop. Many parents may be surprised to find out that the long division that we learned growing up using the traditional algorithm is not actually taught until middle school. So it can be a bit frustrating and confusing as a parent when your child comes home with something that looks like this. But according to Common Core standards, students will use strategies such as the area model when dividing. In addition to enhancing a student's number sense, they will be expected to use this strategy in the fourth and fifth grade. And oh yes, not to forget, they will be tested on it. So it's important that they learn how to use it effectively. So let's get into it. Before we begin, there are some important things to keep in mind. This strategy relies heavily upon an understanding that multiplication and division are closely related to one another and that they are inverse operations. For example, say we are trying to find the quotient of 20 divided by 5. We could use inverse operation to solve for it. So instead, you can think to yourself, what number times 5 equals 20? Since we know that 4 times 5 equals 20, then we know that 20 divided by 5 equals 4. Some key vocabulary to keep in mind. Here we have the dividend, which is the number being divided, the divisor, and the quotient, which is the answer to a division problem. Keeping these things in mind, now we're ready to solve a few problems. We'll begin with dividing a three-digit number by a one-digit number. In this example, we have 245 divided by 3. To begin, we will think in terms of inverse operation. Ask yourself, what number can I multiply the divisor by to get close to the dividend? Or, in other words, think to yourself, what number times 3 gets me close to 245? Now, this requires that I do a little work off to the side. And I'll start multiplying 3 by multiples of 10. I choose to multiply by multiples of 10 because it's easier to do a little bit of mental math. So here we see I have 3 times 10, which is 30, and I know that's way too far off from 245, so then I try 3 times 50. 3 times 50 gives me 115, which is closer, but then if I think about my times table, I know that 3 times 8 gives me 24, so therefore I'll try 3 times 80, which is 240. Very similar to the traditional strategy, using the area model, I will write 80 just above my dividend 245. And since I know that 80 times 3 equals 240, I'll go ahead and write my 240 underneath 245. Moving on to the next step, I'll subtract 240 from 245. That leaves me with 5. And since 5 is greater than my divisor, I know I can continue dividing. To divide 5 by 3, I must extend my area model by including an additional box. So now I will ask myself, what number times 3 gets me close to 5? And since I know that 1 times 3 gives me 5, I will write my 1 above my dividend of 5 and then multiply. 1 times 3 gives me 3. Now I'm ready to move on to the next step, which is subtraction. 5 minus 3 equals 2. And since 2 is less than my divisor, I know that I'm not able to divide any further. And so the 2 will serve as my remainder. Now, to find the quotient, I must add 80 plus 1 equals 81 with a remainder of 2. Therefore, I know that 245 divided by 3 equals 81 with a remainder of 2. Let's try another problem. This time, we will be using a four-digit dividend and a one-digit divisor. To begin, remember to think in terms of inverse operation. So encourage your child to ask themselves, what number multiplied by 8 will get me as close to 6,492 as possible? 6,492 may be a large number for students to work with, and they may be a little intimidated, so encourage them to think in smaller chunks. Instead, think 
What number times 8 gets me closer to 64? Help your child to recognize that when working with larger numbers, it is reasonable to work with larger multiples of 10. So instead of saying 8 times 10, which will only give us 80, we'd want to start with a larger multiple of 10. Let's say 8 times 100, which gives us 800. And as we mentioned before, since we already know that 8 times 8 equals 64, then we can instead multiply 8 times 800, giving us 6,400. After adding those numbers to my area model, I am now ready to subtract 6,400 from 6,492, leaving me with a difference of 92. Since I know that 92 is greater than my divisor, I can continue dividing. Now that I have extended my area model, I am now ready to divide 92 by 8. So I will think to myself, what number can I multiply 8 by that will get me closest to 92? Since I know that 8 times 10 equals 80, I can now subtract 80 from 92, leaving me with 12. And since I know that 12 is greater than my divisor, I know that more division is needed. So the question is, could I have gotten even closer to 92? If we think about it, since we know that 8 times 11 equals 88, that would have brought me much closer to 92, eliminating an additional step. But since I subtracted 80 from 92, leaving me with 12, I will now have to extend my area model to continue with division. Oh yes, and I must not forget to add my 10 for when I multiplied 8 times 10. Now that we have extended our area model, we are now ready to continue with division. I will ask myself, what number can I multiply by 8 to bring me as close to 12 as possible? Since I know that 1 times 8 equals 8, I will now subtract it from 12, leaving me with 4. Since my 4 is smaller than my divisor, I know that I am done dividing. So the four will serve as my remainder. Now it is time to complete the final step, which is to add the partial quotients. 800 plus 10 and one equal 811 with the remainder of four. Therefore, I know that 6,492 divided by eight equals 811 with the remainder of four. Okay, at this point, you've seen two examples of how to effectively use the area model to divide with repeated practice use of this strategy will be a breeze. So parents, please resist the urge to teach your child the traditional algorithm. Oh yes, and not to forget, I have included this reference sheet with examples and steps on just how to do it. For your personal copy, feel free to reach out to me via email. Well, that's a wrap. And as always, thank you for watching. To continue to support my channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, take care.